All right, today I want to dig a little bit deeper into some of these famous experiments that we talked about last time, and I want to specifically talk about what is the physics that underlies them, and how did the, uh, the authors or, or the, the experimentalists take advantage of the known laws of physics at the time to be able to have extremely profound practical um, results. And so, specifically, we're going to look at the experimental setup and look at, um, you know, as, as much as I can possibly give you an accurate story, which is not all that far, because I'm much more of a theorist than an experimentalist, but I will try to, try to explain exactly how they set this up and exactly what things they did to, to directly measure these, you know, literally quantities on, you know, nanometers or, or you know, measuring the, the single charge of electrons is an extremely difficult thing to do, and it was done numerous times. So, um... I just want to get into how, 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 what some of the genius of these are. So uh, Thompson's cathode ray experiment, where, remember, he discovered that, it, or he measured the charge to mass ratio of the electron. He couldn't nail down one or the other, but he could see how they're related. And then Millikan, who used oil drops in an electric field, which is exactly what we'll talk about here today, to measure the actual, uh, directly measure the charge of the electron, and therefore its mass, based on him. And then we're going to talk about at least uh, the predictions from Rutherford's gold foil experiment and how the results were so astoundingly different than the predictions. And then finally, this was the one experiment that I really should have mentioned last time, and I did not. Um, but Hall is credited with essentially discovering that it's not positive charges creating current through a wire. It's in fact negative charges running the opposite direction that creates what we see as that type of current. So... Um, in the, in the history of the development of, of these experiments, this really should have gone either last or next to last, uh, maybe just before Chadwick's discovery of the neutron. Um, but really, this, this like pedagogically should be the last step along the path. We have these particles, they have a negative charge, positive charge, here's their masses, and then Hall says, oh, and by the way, the things that are actually moving through wires are the negative ones. Turns out that's not how it, how it discovered. He actually click and drag, he discovered this well before any of these other experiments. He, he, his work was done in 1789, so even predating Marie Curie. Um, he did not win a Nobel Prize. However, the quantized version of the Hall effect, the, the quantum Hall effect, um, which was discovered and, and produced in 1980 or 81, um, did in fact win a Nobel Prize in 85. So I'm going to put a, a half asterisk here, or a K, I guess is what a half asterisk is, and I'm going to put 1985 for his derived, derived Nobel. So not, not winning it directly. But this was kind of that last in that series, or really the first in that series of experiments, that really showed the underpinnings of matter. And the, the actual apparatus or the setup of this is, is, I think, like as close to magic in physics as you can get, because the, the, like, it's a really cool question. Is it electrons or protons, or whatever electrons or posit positive things going through a wire? And he has a really cool way to measure that. So um, that's, it's one of my favorite stories in like experimental physics. So we're going to go through and talk about each four of these, and um, by no means saying that they're the, the, the most four experiments, um, or the most four important experiments. There's so many others that really should be mentioned, but I think these are four that really kind of shine in their simplicity, but also their you know, importance in our development of quantum theory.